Hello everyone, my name is CPU and welcome to the review of Warcraft, the movie based on the game World of Warcraft. Although, if we need to be more accurate, it is based on the lore of the Warcraft universe that Blizzard created with numerous games, World of Warcraft just being the last in the line. By now you will have heard or read many of other reviews about it, and I have to say that it is surprising to me how much most of these reviewers hate the movie. It's not the best movie out there, but it's by no means a bad one. The problem with game movies is that most games do not have a rich, deep, well thought out backstory where the events of the game itself spring from. Doom, Far Cry or Alone in the Dark are just examples of this. They were good games, but their gameplay was not story driven, it was not their story that made them great. One might argue that the player creates his or her own story to navigate the game world, that all gamers have their own narrative while playing something that does not provide the story element. And some say that a game which already does have a story is not a good subject matter for a movie, since the story is already known. Then I would say, why make movies out of books? No. The bottom line is that movies need to realize what they are. They are a story delivery system. All the action of Die Hard is a secondary delivery system to the important story of the movie. That is why pure action movies that have nothing else are a bust. And why Die Hard has remained a classic. Warcraft knows what it is. It has drawn from the existing lore, spanning millennia of history and presented a good story. It's not just an action movie with a story, it is a good story with action. All the stories presented by the movie are compelling and transferable. These are some powerful characters with worries, anxieties, hopes, dreams and ideals. Keyword being characters, not just humans. One father worries about the future of his son, and another almost goes crazy at the death of his. These are not orc feelings or human feelings, they are just fatherly feelings, and the movie acknowledges that. It also leads us into what is arguably the core narrative of the Warcraft universe. Why are the orcs and the humans fighting? It goes straight to the main issue and introduces us with enough fidelity to the established lore what the origin of the everlasting war is about. That helps both the new and the old to the franchise. The new are introduced well enough to what the story is, the big picture, and the old feel connected to the story they know. In other regards though, the story was lacking. The Kirin Tor is left completely unexplored in any way that would make the new watchers familiarize themselves with this powerful and important group. And then there is this completely unexplained and mysterious Doctor Who Pandorica or 2001's monolith-like object with the acting of an uncredited Glenn Close who is just spouting nonsensical platitudes offering no substance. I was trying hard to understand what it wanted to say. Did it reference the Naru? The Void? Was it reporting on the creation and thus the source of magic? It is left so vague that I could basically fit any theory I wanted in there just because I have something to fill it with, I know things. What would any new viewer make of it, I wonder? But our protagonist ate this up and felt the word of revelation. It was just cringeworthy. Bringing us up to our protagonist, or shall we say protagonists. We have our wizard, Kagar, our captain of the guard, Lothar, the king, Lane Wynn, and his queen Lady Taria. Kagar is the comic relief in this movie. But thank god he's not just another Jar Jar Binks. He's fine as the young, impressionable and bold due to his youth and talent wizard. He is fleshed out nicely enough, as are all the others. The king is all one might want a king to be, the queen is bold on her own person and not just a pretty thing to be at the arm of a king and the captain of the guard is an extremely capable commander, fighter and tactician. And then we have Medivh, the guardian, the master wizard who is supposed to be the better of them all. We see his power, we feel his importance in the events of the movie, but he is basically left undeveloped. I know who Medivh is, but not because of the movie and that's bad. He is of pivotal importance to the story and all the circumstances and character development that should have been mentioned are missing. So while I do appreciate the telling of Kagar's childhood abandonment over a campfire, I believe that this time should have been spent to other parts of the story. On the other hand, we do not really get to know the orcs. Durotan, the noble orc chieftain of the Frostwolves, Orgrim, 
a war chief, and Durton's friend since childhood, Gorona, a half-orc of unknown origin, and Gul'dan, the warlock. The movie does a good job of introducing us these characters and giving us a little bit of a backstory, but not a lot. And there is not as much character development from one action to the next. One important distinction occurs with the character of Gorona. We never find out why she is different. She knows how to speak human, and all we get as an explanation is we caught prisoners. I've always hated that in movies. No magic, no technology. We just have to accept that some people are so very good at languages that they can pick them up in a short time. Although time past is another subject we have to go into a little later. Gorona is a mystery that we might explore in a later movie, but that is not the only thing left off. Just before I had gone to see the movie, I had heard of a piece of news that if the Warcraft movie was to do well in the box office, there would be a director's cut made available with 40 minutes of extra footage. That's a big chunk of extra footage which surprised me until I saw the movie and I observed the uncomfortable cuts. The little bits of editing that jumped over plot points and explanations. These editing decisions are actually also responsible for the confusion one feels about the duration of the events of the movie. How long was the York invasion going on for? How long did they keep prisoners for so that Gorona could have had a chance to learn the language? We just do not know how long this is going on for. This in turn makes the seeming freedom the orcs enjoy to do all the things they want to do all the more peculiar. Why is no one responding? Where is the military? Is it really this short of a time that there could not have been a response? Or were they just unorganized, too few and incapable to make a plan? Where is the explanation for this? Nowhere. That's where. The orc invasion is rather massive and no single race has responded. However, that might explain why there are fewer races in this movie than an American comedy set at San Francisco in the 60s. This is just orcs and humans, and that is not even a geek nod to the people who played the original Warcraft game, released on November 1994, with the full title of Warcraft Orcs and Humans. Even in that game, we had races helping out, not in the movie. We see dwarves forging, dwarves nodding in agreement, and elves nodding in agreement and that is all we ever see of the other races. There is absolutely nothing else that any other race does. It's mind-boggling to me that they would just do that. I mean, even a murloc made it to the movie. Then that murloc has very nearly the same screen time as the elves do. The dwarves are a little bit more fleshed out, but not by much. And there are absolutely no tauren or gnomes. Of course, the effects in this movie are just phenomenal. The races do look good. From the opening shot, a close-up of Durotar, to all expression of magic, to the scale of combat and to the recreation of locales, cities, everything is absolutely remarkable. The production value here is just outstanding. Now if they only chose to showcase magic usage a little bit more. The big battles are just all-out melee brawls with swords, spears, axes and fists. Medivh does one impressive lightning wall, and Kagar manages three spells of any significance, but that's it. I still do not understand why fantasy movies are so afraid to showcase magic, and when I saw this in Warcraft, it left a very bad taste. This is the world where most of the people playing it are magic yielders, but there is no druid, there is no shaman, there is no cleric, there is no paladin. I am hugely disappointed to not have witnessed a big screen all-out battle with paladin bubbles, arcane missiles, druids in cat form and so much more, all of which would not add time on screen. This is made all the more painful after having seen what they did with a few pieces of magic they did represent. It was just so nice to see Kagar drawing the runes and symbols needed to create a spell, or to, unbeknownst to him, show off his power and talent by capturing an orc all by himself. So no magic. But where are all the ranged combatants? Where are the archers, the gun-toting hunter dwarves, the catapults, and the elven ballistas? Nowhere to be found, lost either in the budgetary constraints or the editor's floor. It is sad when you compare with Blizzard game cinematics and see incredible battles on screen that you wish were feature-length movies. I know scores of people that have been clamoring for a full feature film in the vein of Blizzard cinematics. Unfortunately, this is not that. To recap, the movie has a good character-based story. It has its funny moments, it does some service to the fan, and it's not hard to follow for newcomers. But it is badly edited, badly paced, not developed as much as it could or should have been, and while the technical expertise of the people handling the effects is plainly evident, that cannot be the focus of the review. After all, the Transformers are also technically superb. 
In Warcraft, no effort was made to present magic as the everyday element of normal Warcraft events or combat, while also leaving all other alliance races out. It is not a bad movie, it simply is also not a good one, although it could have been. Anyone not blind can see that there is love for this project, as well as the basis for a good story, and so many other good things going for it. But decisions made and stories not followed make it just miss that point of excellence. I like the things it did well, and I am sorry it did not offer the rest of it. I can only give this movie a 7 out of 10. I can only hope that the second Warcraft themed movie that Mr. Duncan Jones directs has some time to correct these things. Thank you for your time.